Kenny here again. I got my next boat in, the launch of the HMS Victory. Here's a picture. This will be a fun boat to build. I was looking to focus on planking, practicing my planking. And so we got lots of uh, planks to bend, double, double wall, I guess you call that. Uh, it's a little bit longer, quite a bit longer than I thought. Over two feet long, that's not quite what I expected. You should pay attention to what I'm doing, these, purchasing these boats. And uh, I looked at the instructions ahead of time. Here they are. They are in Italian. So I'll see if I can find some English version online. Or I have friends who speak Italian. Maybe they can help me decode these. But uh, it should be fun. Good little project to do. And here's all the usual parts in a flat box. So this will be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Let's get started. I found the English instructions in the box. As you can see here in the plans, these are in Italian, and it kind of confused me for a little bit, but it seems like these figure instructions here match pretty much what's going on, so I think that's okay. Then I knocked off all of the, the parts from the cutout, and they weren't marked well, but that's no problem because on sheet two they have these little schematic outlines. So I put them on there and I marked them with a little red ink and uh, then following the instructions, it would be one, two, three, four and so forth, we'll be able to install them. And so I'm in the process now about figuring out where to file and how much and then put it together like this. So we're on the way. For the instructions, I assembled the parts without glue to check the skeleton and the shape frames N1 and N13. And I've done that, and I grabbed a real flexible piece from another kit and kind of laid it right in there, and it looks like it's just about right. And I'm not quite sure down here, but this these M13 could come off. I'm going to now glue it together, and then I'll, I'll try bending some wood and laying it on there. And I can always... Uh, take the N13 off and shape it some more, but I really wanted to get N1 because once it's on, it'll be a little more difficult to shape. Oh man, I made my first mistake and it's a doozy. As I said, these instructions here are Italian throughout the whole sheets, but there's a parallel set of instructions here in English. They're rather abbreviated. But I followed them. They seem to be clear. It said to dry fit all of these pieces in, make sure they all fit, and I did that. Then to sand the edges down and bevel them down on the, the bow fillers, and I've done that. Cut one of those bow fillers part way through. I didn't quite understand that. I figured it'd become clear. I've been looking three or four steps in advance. And uh, then it says to glue all the pieces in and pound nails on there, and, and I have did that. Then it says to put candle wax along the edges, and I've never seen that before. I didn't quite understand that, so I figured I'd figure out what that's all about. And then to do planking along the edge. And I've been studying my planking resources, and I'm getting ready to do some planking, and I'm trying to stay ahead of the game. And then it says to put a second roll of planking on, and sand that down, get it smooth. I can do that. Then put veneer on the bow and the stern, put veneer on the keel and I says okay I can do that we'll see if I do that maybe save it till later and then take it all out and I go wait a minute how am I supposed to take it out I glued it in this up here said glue it what was I supposed to glue it to they all look loose so what I did was is I uh, glued all these pieces in like it said I uh, put glue along the edge here and pounded nails and made them flush they're going to be hard to pull off and I placed glue along every one of these joins, which is what I've done in my other boats. And now I'm seeing they have to come out. Fortunately, I didn't get carried away, but I think I'm going to have to disassemble all this and start again. I hope I don't break anything. Bummer. I researched on the web how to unglue wood glue and found that denatured alcohol would do that. So I bought some, I went out to the hardware store and got a little syringe and squirted it around some of the joints, took my X-Acto blade, carved away at the, at the dried wood glue and the softened wood glue and was very careful, took some time and voila, it came unglued. I was so pleased to find that, a little bit tough. I've sanded it down. I chose not to undo the top part, I'll unglue it, 
I'm thinking that will be fine. What I'll do is I'll lay this like this. I'll continue on practicing and doing my planking. And when I'm all done, I will pull this out. And what will be left is a shell of a planked boat. Uh, that'll be a little tricky. Uh, they say you use wax on here. We'll see how that works. But uh, I think the problem solved. All right, we're underway. I've laid the garboard plank along the bottom here, cut it and bent it, glued it on the end and along the keel here. I did not glue it at the, at the bulkheads. And uh, this currently is drying. I bent it so that it kind of lays right there and glued it on the front. And I did glue it here in one, one bulkhead and then glued it on the end over here. And uh, I did use some candle wax and put it along all of those. I don't know if I'll use them or not, but that's what I did. And then I uh, attached the glue to one spot, and in theory it'll come off and it's on the top with the wax. So I'll take these clips off in a little bit, and if it's good, I'll do the other side. Okay, let's start planking. I've uh, looked at a lot of resources online, Model Ship World, Modeler Central, there's quite a few others out there. And I've studied them extensively, downloaded some PDFs, bought a few books. It's been very difficult for me to figure out quite what to do. So nothing like just getting going. I, I like the idea of this, of this planking fan template. That worked for me. I'm going to go kind of quick on this. So I hope that works for you guys. I measured the uh, largest distance between the garboard plank and the top plank here. Turned out to be here on the, this portion. Measured how far that was. And the planks are 6.1 millimeters long, so that allowed for 18.6 planks, was my longest. And so I put this plank on here and I marked out basically 19 planks, laid it along here and made a tick mark for every one of those planks. Then as you come forward, the, uh, the space is shorter, so you grab one of these that are of the right distance and you lay it up here and get a, a shorter one and you can see that they're about 3.8 millimeters a piece marked them on here laid them on here and marked them off and um, I did that for several of them many of them say lay a string along there and mark off sections or a, a, a thread and that's what I've done and so there would be five planks, five planks, four planks, and five planks. And they're, they're the standard size here, or the normal size, 6.1 millimeters. But as they come forward, they get narrower, and these planks show that. So I took my plank, laid it on there, <clears throat> and then saw that it was more narrow. And so I marked it as narrow, drew a line here. And uh, using this it millimeters, double checked it, and I think I like the way my lines are drawn in the front and in the stern. And so, what I'm going to do is cut that plank, going to soak it, get it wet, see if it conforms. If it doesn't, I'll use my plank bender and bend it. You can't really glue to these bulkheads because they're going to be removed. So, I'm going to try to glue it between this plank and the next plank and glue it on the bow filler here and on the stern back here and plank the first five and if that looks good and I've seemed to be holding I will do the next five on this side and I'll work my way all the way down and plank the thing using this technique hope that works I cut the wood to the right length and trimmed them up so they're pretty close and marked which one is which and I'm doing three at once I bought some one inch PVC pipe I bought a fitting for the end, so I put them in the pipe, a little longer than any of the pots and pans I have, put it on the end, open here, my hot water runs pretty hot, so I just fill the pipe, and let it sit there for maybe uh, 20 minutes, depending, I don't actually have to bend it that much for this boat. So 15 also has worked, and um, then I pull them out and put a little steamer to it, and they uh, let them dry. <coughs> now that those piece, these three pieces have been soaked and are wet, 
I just put a generic bend on each one of them. Got to keep track of which one's which and how to bend them. I think it comes up. very good at this but I'm getting better like I say the purpose of this build is to get better at bending I think I'm getting the hang of it <clears throat> uh, but it's kind of got the bend I got my little frames marked I put these pseudo clamps in place Kind of cut it right there. I cut it a little long because you know, and then I make a mistake, and it's good to have a little extra. And then I kind of put a clamp right on top. dry and you can accelerate it with a hair dryer. So here are all three drying. It'll give me the chance now to start working on the other side. Once they're dry I'll take them off and uh, refine their edges a little more and glue them in. This has been a great boat to practice planking on. There's 21 planks per side, 42 planks per layer. It's a double layer hull, so lots of planks to bend and practice on. I've got most of them all laid down. I've gotten good at uh, shaping the planks and bending them with my plank bender and gluing them in place and uh, doing pretty good. I kind of made a mistake where I let some of them curve up a little bit too much and it got crowded in the bow. So I've had to put a drop plank or two in the front and in the stern. And uh, that's not to be desired on the final hull, but being that this is the underlayment, it's okay. I'll uh, finish it up, sand it down, and uh, really work hard on the next layer to where they are just go straight across. It'll be a much prettier sight. I've also had a little problem with uh, getting the planks to bend out a little bit, like a clinker style affair. I think when I cut the next one, I'm just not going to shape them. I'm going to actually curve them a little bit so they fit under there. I've been studying all my resources, and I've been learning a lot, and I never really did shape them that way. So this will be something new I'll practice at, and the next layer will be good. So I'm really happy so far. I'll show you when the, when the hole is done. I laid a piece of masking tape along the top of the bow here, took an indelible marker, and laid a green line right along the edge here. Then I pulled the tape off, laid it on a thicker piece of, piece of wood, and I had a hard time figuring out how to transfer this ink mark onto the wood, so I just used an X-Acto blade and cut through the tape and kind of made a mark on the wood. And so that I got my first cut here. And then I used my calipers, and I know that this is supposed to be 5.1 millimeters and over here is supposed to be 7 so they marked it off and then I got a curve and as you can see on a flat piece of wood this indeed does have 
a little bit of a bowl to it right here. And if that's in the bow, maybe that will remove the clinker style. So I, this is a good practice session. That's what I've done is uh, figured out the process. It's a little bit difficult, but I'll get better as time goes on. And um, what I'm going to do is not use this. First, I'm just going to more diligently mark each of these planks and carefully sand them down so that they have a uniform thickness and I don't get all that crowding in the bow. And I'll work on each one of those carefully, both the bow and the stern will have kind of a uniform thickness. So I put the next three planks on here on each side by trimming the bow and the stern to the measured widths and I put them on and it didn't seem like I was getting any bowing or clinkering of the wood. It looks like it's going to work all the way down. Now that I got a total of four here and a couple on the bottom, <coughs> I remeasured the distances and adjusted them and I'm going to put another couple on each side and it looks like I'm going to come all the way down without having to spile or trim to account for this curving. Now maybe when it gets down here where it's more curved as opposed to this flat part I'll have to do some of that spiling but so far it looks like it's going to go all the way down. I did get a little bit of curving and that's because of the non-uniform uh, underlayment here and uh, this is because I didn't measure them correctly so in theory this is going to go nice all the way down and look good so that's where I am at the moment. Another thing I've done different is is I trimmed the bow uh, along this line here but I made this distance a lot longer. In the underlayment the first part I only trimmed a little bit and then there was like a radical change here and that might have caused some of the curving to be. So by making a much longer trim on both ends, the wood seems to curve better on the boat up here. Okay, I'm coming to that part of the boat where the curve of the boat is causing this bank to be, uh, plank to be bent laterally, causing it to like curve out a clinker style. So when you lay it in here and you lay it along, you can see it doesn't quite want to lay up close to that and if you bend that up you're bending it laterally and there's a gap here. I don't know how easily you can see that but you let that clinker style look. So I'm going to soak this wood and then I'm going to bend it with my bending iron and see if that's the case. Alright so I soak the wood and it bends around and doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of a gap here but there's a big gap underneath. It's, uh, it's sticking out. It's hard to bend the wood in three dimensions and uh, if, I, if I, it's soft so if I lay this down and force it then we get this gap here and I'm thinking uh, this might be where I need to spile that wood and curve it better. I actually have that problem on this side where I have a bit of a gap there and I didn't quite understand thought maybe that was too thick but it's of a uniform dimension but by forcing it down you get this kind of undesirable gap it's not too big but here I'm thinking it's a little bit more of a curve and so that's where I uh, I spiled the wood Oop, this fell right off so as I did before I laid a piece of tape along here used my indelible marker and measured the edge and then I took it off and laid it on a thicker piece of wood and used my X-Acto blade and marked on the wood. This was the result and uh, then I smoothed it out and measured the dimensions. I think um, 5.1 here and 7.2 there. And as, as you can see when you lay it on a flat piece of wood here it, there is a distinct curve different than um, than the other wood and I think this is what's going to keep that clinker looking uh, effect here. So let's take this off, just throw it away and make another one, kind of lay it up there and sure enough this looks like it's going to lay up there and look very nice up front and lay more flat. So I will soften this up and glue it in and then I'll uh, cut this other piece of wood and feather it in and continue on the normal way. 
and I don't know if I'm going to have to do this all the way down or just a few key spots, but uh, that's where I am now. I finished planking the boat. I ended up spiling the wood all the way down through to the bottom. I just did the front section here as you can see and then I uh, put the rest of the wood up and uh, tapered it down to the back. No spiling needed back here. It uh, actually came out quite good. I'm quite happy. There's uh, some errors where I could get better. I got better as I went down, but overall I'm really happy. It's pretty smooth. This sanding job will be much uh, less than it was in some of my other boats where I had that clinker style sticking out and I had to sand the edges down to make them appear smooth. This actually is pretty good. Uh, there's still some issues where my joins were a little hasty and didn't do such a good job, but I'll sand those down and we'll see. Uh, then um, on the back here, I have to uh, trim these ends up and prepare to put some... Uh, mahogany up there and along here but first I think I need to paint it so I'm uh, I'll start the sanding job here and I'm ready to start the next phase one of my main goals in selecting this boat was planking the double layer multiple planks and it's really exceeded my expectations I've learned a lot and I got pretty good at some stuff but this spiling or getting the planks to go flat on a curved surface was a little tricky. I did the tape thing as I showed you. When you laid the tape on a larger piece of wood and then you would cut it out, it's kind of by hand and you take this X-Acto blade and you cut and if your angle isn't straight, then when the two pieces go to meet, they're not butted up against each other. In other words, it's not necessarily square. So I really worked hard at keeping my X-Acto blade straight and turning the corners and where there was mistakes, I would sand them down as carefully as flat as I could. But there still turns out to be gaps here in where the planks meet. And maybe that's the way it always is, I don't know. But the tape didn't always work, so I tried the cardboard affair where you would take a piece of cardboard instead of the tape, lay it in where you think it goes, and then... Uh, a larger piece of cardboard, mark it with a pencil and then cut the cardboard out, lay the cardboard on the plank and again you hand cut it out and it just isn't perfect. So I always cut a little larger then I took it down to my grinder and ground it flat and uh, it worked pretty good. I'm really happy with the smoothness and how they fit together and the planks all seem to be straight but there's still these little gaps here. So now I'm at the stage is where I'm going to get ready to paint the boat and move on maybe to the deck or finish up the trim and move on to the deck. So how do I fill these gaps? And I've done two things. I'm experimenting because I'm struggling with what the right, maybe the resources are out there and I haven't found them, but I haven't found them. So I took this particular one here, as you can see, and I very carefully filled the gaps individually where they were and went through all very carefully and then sanded it down and it looks pretty good. Uh, does it look pretty good or not? I, I can't tell. Some of the pictures online and the text alludes to the fact that it could be better. They, the pictures weren't the sharpest. So I'm sort of happy. I put some sealer on here to see how it looked, got ready to paint, and then it's just too wobbly for me. And there's still a little bit of gap. So I saw another one online that completely covered the side in putty like this. And so I didn't put too much putty on, but I put it all the way. I'm experimenting. I'm here to learn how to do planking. And I'm going to sand this all down and see if it produces a better surface. And then with this experiment, I'm ready to move on. So earlier I said I hadn't found any resources yet online and how to deal with the finishing of these planks. But that's not true. I searched and continued to search for the web and found some very good... Um, techniques on model forms and I found a guy's link that covered uh, all the all planking with a putty as you saw and I sanded it off I used uh, wood uh, filler instead and it was soft and I sanded it off pretty quick and I'm really happy with the results it's quite smooth and as you can see you can't see the crack so I got to figure out now whether I'm going to use urethane to finish this or I'm going to use a paint sealer paint it white and put urethane over but uh, I'm on my way, and now the question is, is this good enough, or do I got to maybe putty this side completely and sand it as well? But it looks really good. So I've taped off both sides of the boat, 
and I've decided to leave the first three strakes or planks uh, bare and we'll show that as a natural base wood and uh, we'll see how that plays there'll be some kind of um, trim here along the bottom and then there'll be some bare wood and then there'll, there'll be some bare wood and then there'll be white all the way up to here so I'm going to start with some surface primer and uh, see how that goes I finished painting the hole. This is the side that had a wood filler on. It looks pretty smooth. There's still some cracks, but I think that's just the way it goes. And then this is the other side where uh, I just put the putty on sparingly or put the wood filler in sparingly. And it's also quite well. I think I like the other side better. That's the end of that experiment. I just filler it in and sand it down and that seemed to work the best. But it's not a total cure-all. Could be that my underlayer was uh, first layer on the on the hull was too uneven and it made the second layer worse. But it's not bad. I like it. And then I'll put this wood trim down here. And um, I read that face wood doesn't really stain too good. I'll probably put the urethane on here. No urethane right here. I think I'm going to stick with the paint. Although the urethane might seal. Well, I think when the boat flexes, these joints crack a little bit. And I'm not sure how that's going to work out. So maybe urethane would uh, keep that seal better, I don't know. But for the moment, I'm just going to put it along here, along with uh, this piece like this. And uh, once I trim this white, I'm going to flip the boat over and start working on the top part. I've pretty much finished with the hull. I've done all the planking, the painting, and sealing. And uh, maybe I'll come back and touch them up later. But for the moment, I'm done. And I've turned to the interior. And I've uh, cut the this little uh, deck off and pulled these out and uh, some came out nice like that and others came out in pieces and now I'm getting ready to uh, do the inside and I'm currently dry fitting the inside and then uh, I sanded some along the inside but I'll sand some more and uh, sometime along the way I'll have to put some urethane on there but for the moment I'm putting this dry fit in and I'm seeing uh, some anomalies here. Uh, this apparently is a little too long. It doesn't quite fit in here, as you can see. And this one also is too long, and it doesn't fit in there. And I don't know quite what took place. And then on this end here, I had a hard time getting this one out. A couple of these kind of got glue on them, and this one's got glue. So I'm in the process now of, uh, of cutting this. And also I saw that um, I should have done my trimming a little lower even with this. Nowhere in the instructions did it say how far down to pre-cut this. So I'm now going to have to figure out how to cut this so it's level with this because this piece here doesn't quite go in uh, and let, with this being raised. It has to be lowered so I will do that. So up to now we have been focusing on building the hull and I think that's where I'm going to end this video part one focused on the hull. I started working on the upper part. I've uh, taken, uh, laid a lot of planks along the, the decking up here and started building the grating and uh, plank some of the fore part. And there's a lot of work to do up there, oars and everything, and it's going to take quite a while. So rather than making one long video, I thought I'd make two videos. And rather than waiting to release this one, I would release it now. So here's the video on the hull, part one. And in two or three months, I will release part two showing the finished boat and uh, so until then have a good time and i'll see you in a little while